Hello and welcome to the first video of section 4.2 on the definition of definite integrals. Section 4.2 is our introduction to integration, a concept which is fundamental to calculus. Essentially, when a function is integrated, the area between the curve and the x-axis is computed. In section 4.1, we used Riemann sums to estimate the area under a curve. By setting a fixed number of fitted rectangles, the area under the curve can be approximated by the sum of the rectangular areas. The approximation becomes more precise with an increase in the number of rectangles. Notice that the over and under estimation of the first approximation is much greater than the over and under estimation of the second approximation. Taking the limit as the number of rectangles approaches infinity, we are able to find the area under the curve. We use this observation as the definition of a definite integral. To define the definite integral of f from a to b, divide the interval a to b into n subintervals of equal width delta x. We now have n subintervals. Choose a single point xi star from each subinterval and use the value f of xi star as the height of a rectangle based on the subinterval. The sum of the area of these rectangles approximates the area under the curve of f. And the limit as n approaches infinity, that is the number of subintervals increasing unboundedly, is the definite integral of f on the interval a, b. The definite integral is identified with the integral symbol, which historically finds its roots in the long s character, long s for a limit of summations. We denote the bounds of the definite integral along the integral symbol, and use the term dx to denote the variable we are integrating for. It may seem irrelevant now, but with additional variables in a function, d of x becomes important. Think of the weaknesses the prime notation for derivatives has in comparison to the Leibniz notation. The definite integral is defined as a limit, and limits do not always exist. A function whose definite integral exists on the interval a, b is said to be integrable on a, b. The majority of functions which we will encounter will be integrable. In fact, continuous functions are integrable. Be careful with that information. That does not mean that only continuous functions are integrable. For integrable functions, the limit of the definition exists, and any choice of sample point xi star will yield the same value. After all, the subintervals are decreasing towards zero in size as the number of subintervals increases towards infinity. When we use the limit definition of a definite integral, to standardize the choice of our sample point, we will use the convention that xi star is the left endpoint. That is, on the ith interval, xi star is a plus i delta x. For example, the definite integral of the function x cubed plus x sine x on the interval 0 to pi is found by, is found by subdividing the interval 0 to pi into n subintervals of length delta x. And using the left endpoint for a sample point, xi star is equal to a plus i delta x, or i pi over n. Therefore, the integral from 0 to pi of x cubed plus x sine of x is the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n, f with x of i star, which is i pi over n, times delta x, which is pi over n. In class, we will work on calculating such limits with much, much easier functions. Using formulas associated with the sigma notation, it may seem very difficult to calculate a definite integral using the limit definition. But like derivatives, the limit definition allows us to develop computational tools, will, allow us, will usually allow us to proceed without even thinking of the original definition. It is important to note that the definite integral calculates the net area under the curve of f. In fact, when we say the area under the curve, what we mean is the area between the curve and the x-axis. So when the function is below the x-axis, the area is counted as negative. Take a look at the limit definition. When the y-values of f are negative, we are introducing a rectangle 
we are introducing a rectangle with negative height into our summation, effectively removing area from our sum. In order to calculate the total area, that is, to count all of the area as positive, we must use absolute values. We will see more on this subject in later sections. In the second video of section 4.2, we'll explore fundamental properties of the definite integral.